Great. Nobel laureate Amartya Sen finds himself at the receiving end of the BJP's anger today after he strongly criticised the Gujarat Chief Minister on his governance model and indeed the Chief Minister himself. But his comments have focused attention again on the vibrant Gujarat story that Modi keeps talking about. Is it for real? I can learn from Modi's way of cleaning up business administration and doing physical infrastructure without trying to learn from Modi's way of dealing with education and healthcare and gender equity and without learning from his way of dealing with minorities. I, I would rather have a democratic Indian kind of system, but things to learn from the way to treat the minorities, to, ge to generate some security. And a good luck model might learn something about that on that subject <laughs> from Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. And not all praise for Narendra Modi by Amartya Sen on interviews to NDTV. Criticism that has rankled the BJP. Disappointed by his comparison of Gujarat only on selected few parameters picking the holes in some areas like education or health. Why are we not talking about Gujarat's progress throughout the 11th five-year plan? Yes. Amartya Sen is not the only one questioning the Gujarat story. The CPM has released a booklet accusing the Modi rule of being pro-corporate and full of social inequalities and encouraging jobless growth and low wages. And the National Sample Survey Organization's latest data says, Gujarat has slipped from 4th to 8th place among states on rural expenditure and from 7th to 9th place in urban expenditure. The report has yet again brought into focus the debate on whether Gujarat Chief Minister Narendra Modi's growth model is truth or a mere hype. The Gujarat government has been consistently boasting about a 10% GDP as compared to 7% nationally. But economists are skeptical about these claims. The Gujarat Chief Minister has boasted that the six vibrant Gujarat events the Chief Minister has held have resulted in MOUs for FDIs worth $426 billion. But so far, no real investment has come in. These are all long-term projects which always take time and that is probably the reason why 2003 figures look very high. Maybe over a period of time, all the other figures will also be equally high. But it's not like all the claims the Gujarat government is making are fake. While the National Council of Applied Economic Research has found high levels of hunger in the state and Gujarat has reduced its infant mortality rate only 10 points where the national average was 13, it has also paved 90% of its roads, electrified 98% of its villages and supplied piped water to 86% villages. So is it really a question of picking figures selectively and using them to brag or criticize? In Ahmedabad, Rohit Ban for NDTV. Well, the question is, is vibrant Gujarat a myth or a reality? The uh, issue has come into sharp focus again, especially since Mr. Modi talks about it a lot as the campaign gets well and truly underway. You can take part in that debate via the second screen app on your Android or iOS devices. Go there, look at the questions that others have put in, type in your own question and see what you'd like to ask the panel tonight. Well, joining us uh, on that this evening is Professor Atul Sood, economist uh, with Jawaharlal Nehru University, who's edited a book, uh, in fact, called Poverty Admits Prosperity, uh, that's essays on the trajectory of development in Gujarat. So he's someone who knows the subject very well. Siddharth Nath Singh of the BJP continues to stay with us. Senior journalist Siddharth Bhatia joins us tonight from Mumbai. Zafar Sareshwala, entrepreneur from Gujarat who has been become uh, a fan of Mr. Modi's in recent years, also joins us this evening and will be joined by Dr. Abhishek Singhvi of the Congress Party. Let me ask Siddharth Nath Singh first. What Amartya Sen okay. has, has said in the last couple of days really seems to have rankled the BJP. There are very, very sharp reactions to his criticism uh, of the Gujarat model. Uh, but if you look at what he said, and I'm just going to take one or two quotes here. He has some praise for Mr. Modi as well. Uh, you know, he, he says that uh, he, he can learn from Modi's way of cleaning up business administration, improving, improving physical infrastructure, but without trying to learn from his way of dealing with education, healthcare, and gender equity. What, what really ha has the BJP taken offence to? The part where he says he, he wouldn't want Modi to be the Prime Minister uh, because his criticism of his economic model seems to be balanced. Well, I don't think uh, Mr. Amartya Sen's uh, economic model or he as an economist is the last word in uh, economic development. There are others also and one may disagree with him. But at the same time, you know, when uh, Mr. Amartya Sen uh, trying to promote one of his books 
and uh, there he uses Modi and then he censors on the uh, Rahul Gandhi that as a politician he couldn't judge but yes as a uh, politician, Prime Minister candidate uh, uh, Modi ji can be judged by him. I think it raises uh, political questions because uh, one may concede that uh, recently we have seen in India the economists are turning into politicians but definitely they don't turn then they uh, later they are neither economists nor politician. So Mr. Amartya Sen's model could be different and it can be challenged by many. But there is, uh, on a macro level, what one is, may just, like to, to talk about the drug model. Siddharth, and I'm just going to interrupt you once to ask you that is anybody yeah. who criticizes the Gujarat model and the Modi model necessarily driven by a, a political motive? Uh, there, there could be uh, you know, genuine criticism based on facts and figures. Like I said, he has praise for the Gujarat model well, and Mr. Modi and he well, has uh, criticism. One, why, one is, why, does it, why is a political da, motive seen there? No. No, Nidhi, one one says a political motive because the interview in the interview you are ask a question the, about uh, the other aspirant from the Congress and you immediately duck that question and that's a political ducking it wasn't that you innocently you have taught him you have met him then you say that I have not even studied him so I don't think it is but at the same time I also attribute certain political in the sense the state which he belongs to in India Although he doesn't stay 50% of his time in India, but nevertheless, the state which he belongs, West Bengal, there is a Satcher Committee report. And the Muslim conditions are well explained under the Satcher Committee. That they are worse off than many other states and Gujarat is definitely much above where the Muslims, uh, you know, index, happiness index has been considered. Or their employment and the government jobs are being considered. We all know that 10% of the Muslims in Gujarat they the 5.8 percent are employed in the government whereas in, in west bengal from where he come out of 30 percent of the population only two two percent okay, get a get job in the Tavishik government Singh uh, in west bengal okay, let, let, so, Dr. Singh, I, how so does the criticism the, can be criticism can be welcome but it needs to be balanced <laughs> and logically and it should be uh, with certain facts and unfortunately it doesn't hold this time with mr martia sen